Well, a very, very warm welcome to the opening round of the 2024 Fanatec GT World Challenge Asia, powered by AWS. Great to be here. Apologies for the delay, but we had a massive storm earlier, and an hour delay has been required to get the cars out onto the grid. So, without further ado, we're really going to build up to a cracking season. Two seasons ago, this was a toe in the water after two years away following the global pandemic, but it's grown and grown since then. We've got a full, full grid of cars, and I think the person who is going to tell you all about it is Tom Hornsby who's been taking a look at all the runners and rises the new faces in new places so sit back and enjoy this 2024 guide Fanatec GT World Challenge Asia powered by AWS 2024 blasts into action this weekend at Sepang where a capacity 33 car entry can test two 60 minute races this is your essential guide to the new season International factory stars and the region's fastest AMs once again litter a talent-packed grid. And amongst them are all four of last year's title contenders, Anthony Liu, Prince Abu Bakar Ibrahim, Buddha Kornin Thapuvasak and Liu Wei, as well as eight GT3 manufacturers and 24 teams. Liu won the title with Kraft Bamboo and Mercedes AMG here last year, but has now moved across to Absolute Racing, where he partners Porsche driver Alessio Piccarillo. Home favourite Ibrahim is once again with Triple Eight JMR and now joined by Mercedes AMG Junior Jordan Love. While Lou is also in the familiar surroundings of Origin Motorsport, the new name for team's champions R&B Racing. Lauren Heinrich fills the pro seat. And there's another Porsche ace in AAS Phantom Global Racing's garage where reigning Porsche Super Cup champion Bastian Boos links up with Intrafuvasak. Craft Bamboo might have lost Liu, but one of its two Mercedes AMGs still features race winners Jeffrey Lee and Fabian Schiller. Elsewhere, Ralph Aron is a last minute stand in at climax for the WEC bound Jules Gounon. Lamborghini's presence has been limited since the pandemic, but it's back en masse this year thanks to VSR's three car programme. Works driver Marco Mapelli, who won Asia's Pro Am title in 2018, headlines the Italian squad's roster. Audi always has a strong presence in Asia and won twice last year with rising star James Yu. He's back this year in a silver crew with Akash Nandi, while Absolute Racing second R8 features Audi sport legend Marcus Winkelhock. The new Ferrari 296 has also proven popular, even if none of the four examples contain factory talent. Absolute Courses combination of Andre Canard and Finn Gearshitz is probably the pick of this year's prancing horses. The sole BMW is fielded by Team KRC, while race winners D-Station, Satoshi Hoshino and Tomonobu Fuji have the new Aston Martin at their disposal. And there's even more variety thanks to another Japanese outfit, Team Gojigen, which fields the evergreen and ever popular Nissan GTR. Elsewhere, Satir Santoso will contest the AM category solo in EBM's new Vantage. His class rivals include Garage 75's David Tiaptambiantoro and Christian Colombo, perennial contenders Andrew McPherson and Ben Porter, and Hiroshi Hamaguchi and Mineki Okura. Finally, Volgas Motorsports will become the first Korean team to contest Fanatec GT Asia since Indigo Racing in 2019. Han Min Guan and Kim Jae Hyun will be hoping to emulate their compatriot and that year's champion, MJ Choi. So, a stacked entry, top talent and manufacturers galore. 2024 promises to be a vintage Fanatec GT Asia campaign. Well, thank you for a fantastic guide through the grid there, Tom. But the weather, as you can see, we can see the weather. It's good. It's clearing. It was very, very wet with a huge uh, lightning storm here. But, of course, it's very warm, so the track should dry up pretty quickly. We are going to start behind the safety car. It is a wet race, but um, it is drying out. Look at that humidity, 84%. Going to be quite uncomfortable. It's a one-hour race with a pit stop partway through. But let's go down to Amy Zara on the grid to join Benjamin Franasevici, the man who's got this all together, the general manager of SRO Asia. Welcome to the very first starting grid of this 2024 season. The crowd is huge and this is the meet and greet of all the drivers, new teams, new faces and their battles. Benjamin, I must congratulate you on this huge grid. 33 cars are here. So my first question would be, very fast forward, what are you looking forward to this season? Well, we're glad to be starting the season. We've been working behind the scenes 
like you said, we've got a 33 car grid capacity, so we could not be happier. Uh, having 33 GT3 cars here is big. We've got more cars from all over the region. Uh, we're the biggest grid after Europe, so we're very content with what we've achieved. Can you tell me about the, the strength of GT racing in Asia, looking at this full capacity grid? Well, our format is very attractive. The GT3 car is a, a, a very popular format. Uh, our sprint races, uh, our, our, our platform is appreciated and we've got something strong and it's getting bigger and bigger every year. And it's, um, it's very satisfi satisfactory to see uh, our fans, partners enjoying it. Last question about the new class, the Silver M. One third of the entries are in the Silver M. It's a new class, it's been uh, very popular. It gives younger silver drivers the opportunity to show their talent against a more established factory driver and it's uh, shown to be very popular, so that's, uh, that's good to see as well. All right, let's work, look forward to a great race. Thank you, bye-bye. Thanks to you. Thank you very much, Benjamin Franasevici down with Amy Izawa. Now, when you look up at uh, the first corner of the track, as we can see there, this uh, long, long right-hander, the track looks dry, but that's easy to say from the spectator banking, the grandstands, or down on the track. But let's go down and take a look at the cars that are down there on the grid. We won't make Amy run from the very front to the very back, because uh, 16 rows of cars, it's a long, long way, but we've got a fabulous grid. And on pole position, we have, um, well, we talked through the class, it's a silver entry, it's uh, Frankie Chen Kong Fu, who, who absolutely flew was the best part of eight tenths of a second clear in his uh, FAW. Audi Sport Asia Racing Team, Audi R8N, it goes on, R8 LMS. But Amy is down with Frankie Cheng, and uh, we'll hear from the pole man's thoughts. Frankie, it must be such a great feeling to start from this at the season starter. It must be a wonderful feeling. However, the track condition is tricky. Yes, it's going to be quite challenging, and uh, but... So far, we have done a very good job, and uh, many thanks to the team. And uh, it's a tricky condition, but we will try to do our best. All right, I just see that you changed strategy and tires. Sorry, sorry? You changed strategy and tires? Yes, we, because uh, I think we, it's, it's going to dry up quick. Good luck with you. Well, there we go. The team's been discussing whether wet tires, but uh, Amy being moved out of the way, because the team, when you're changing at the last, last second like this, it's always fraught down there. But uh, all the pro drivers, actually it's generally the less experienced drivers starting first, uh, but as an all silver lineup, uh, certainly the car in the front row with Adelie Fong to take over afterwards has two very talented drivers, but it's about, the drivers with less experience might be considering wet weather tyres, but uh, really all the pro drivers, I had a quick chat up and down the pit lane, they said, oh yes, if we were going first, we'd be starting on slicks. And it dries so quickly here at Sepang in the temperature that um, you know you could be sure but the best place to be going into the first corner is in the lead of the race and Frankie Chen Kong Fu down on pole position surely with all his experience his years of racing across Asia will be fairly confident he certainly sounded it down in the car great to have Lamborghinis back you can just see one going out of shot Aston Martins as well the treble seven in the background there that's uh, D station racing and quite a host of new teams as well but Amy has found someone else to talk to and she's with Leo Yi Hong Lee down at the front of the grid. Car number 87 from Origin Motorsport. It's one of the Porsches. So your partner is starting from this position. P2, front row, yeah. but very tricky conditions. Yeah, I think uh, this kind of condition is tricky for most of the M's, but not my partner. He's uh, very good in this condition, so I'm very confident uh, for the performance he, he's going to have. Um, yeah, hopefully we can bring the car back safe and uh, have a stint for me. <laughs> What's the strategy with the driver change and the tires? You have slick tires. Well, I can't tell you the strategy because <laughs> other people are watching the broadcast. But I think everybody else is going to have pretty similar strategy, apart from the silver cars. I think they're going to run the opposite. But for most of the M drivers, gonna, they're going to pit early, for sure. All right, the best luck to you. Thank you. Very good point made uh, by Leo Yi Hong Lee. Origin Motorsport, it's green and white Porsche. You can see it on the right-hand side of the screen, formerly known as R&B Racing, and they had great uh, results last year. In fact, won the team's championship. When you've got a, a pair of balance pros like the Silver Cruise, you, you can take the risk. But I think what's going to happen is the short, run, the short run will be to the amateur drivers who largely are the starting drivers. They can pit any time between 25 and 35 minutes into this race. And so you put your less, your less experienced driver with the shorter stint, but uh, you expect the car on pole to start, fr start from pole, car number 36, and stay out as long as he possibly can. 
Now, 88, that's... It's uh, Craft Bamboo Racing Mercedes. Jeffrey Lee will be starting that. Fabian Schiller, who's had great success in, in the series, will be doing the second stint. Now, Frankie Chen Kong Fu on pole position has won once in this championship, but not since 2018. So he's going to be super, super hungry. One of our favorite cars on the grid is uh, Team Go Gigan. It's the Nis Nismo Nissan, and the grid's being cleared around it. That's the only one of those in this race, but very, very popular, most notably in Japan. And uh, that is one of the eight manufacturers on this grid of 32 cars. We should have had 33, um, but unfortunately the GTO Racing Porsche had an accident in testing and they were trying to build up a new one as fast as they could. It's still being worked on in the garage, so maybe we'll have it tomorrow, but uh, right now, 32 cars. It's a big step forward. Car number 13 is another one we've uh, had. Phantom Global Racing made a good impression last year. Sun Jing Su will start that, and he'll be sharing with Swedish racer Joel Eriksson, one of a few drivers who've uh, not competed in this championship before. So new faces, new cars, new teams. It's a busy place to be for Fanatec GT Asia. And uh, car 36, there it is on pole position. Phantom Global looking down on that one. Got to get used to the new liveries for this year. Frankie Cheng will be kicking off, and then Adelie Fong. Audi R8 LMS Evos with red, gold and black, quite similar to car number 40. Isn't it great to see 16 rows of cars? GT3 racing has been a massive, massive success. It's grown and grown since its inauguration. GT4 followed suit and now GT2 is starting to pick up the numbers as well. Now this is the moment in which you can see the cars nice and clear. Origin Motorsport right in front of us, they're second on the grid. The purple car behind is also from Origin Motorsport. And then the second of the Audis on the right-hand side of the grid in fourth position on the grid is uh, Audi Sport Asia, Team Absolute. And that's James Yu, who won one of the two races here at the end of the 2023 season. So he certainly must fancy his chances. Again, that's a, a very strong lineup. Car number 40. And we've got some uh, faces like Marcus Finkelhock. He's down on row seven. Look out for him in the second half of the race. A driver with an enormous amount of Audi racing experience. We've got three Ferrari 296 GT3s. Great to have those. They look fantastic on the grid. And great to have three Lamborghinis now, keeping that Italian flavor in this Asian championship. There it is, car 63. Running in the typical bright green, lime green of Lamborghini, run by Vincenzo Sospiri Racing. And again, a huge spread of nationalities. I did a quick tossing up. I can't remember if I got to 19 or 20, but uh, great to have this uh, really, really cosmopolitan grid of cars and the growing grid of cars. And when we get to the Japanese rounds, the numbers will swell yet more, as Benjamin Francovici told us when he was down on the grid with Amy Izawa. Now, just to reiterate, this is still listed as a safety car start, so that though they're two by two now, they should uh, go off in grid order and form one by one, Indian file. And we were looking beforehand, before we had the one hour delay, two hour, uh, sorry, uh, to have two formation laps. And the idea is they'll do the first one. And if all is well, the clock will start. The race will run for an hour. And between 25 minutes into the race and 35 minutes into the race, we will have the mandatory pit stop. And it's 90 seconds, the pit stop. And that's from uh, pit in to pit out. And I mean, if you were just driving through at the speed limit, the speed limit in the pit lane, it would take you 30 seconds. So it allocates a minute for each of those pit stops. And then, of course, when we get to subsequent rounds, the first three finishes in this race will have extra time in their pit stops. So success penalties, if you will. In the second race, the car that finishes first will have to have an extra 15 seconds at the pit stop. You try gaining 15 seconds in a race. Second place, 10 seconds extra at the pit stop. Third place, five seconds. But here we have a grid, 32 cars, 24 teams, eight manufacturers, four different classes of cars, and we're all set for the 2024 Fanatec GT World Asia Challenge. Sorry, GT Challenge Asia, powered by AWS. This is the view, looking forward from fifth on the grid, and this is uh, Prince Abu Bakar Ibrahim, he's got his own fan club sitting in the final grandstand, final unit of the grandstand down towards turn one, cheering his Mercedes on. That's from Triple Eight JMR. And one of the
the Princes of Johor is proving quicker with every year. Now the car looking forward. This is from immediately behind uh, the Princes car. This is last year's champion. This is Anthony Liu. He's not in a Craft Bamboo Racing Mercedes this year. He's moved to Absolute Racing and to Porsche. And he's got one of the top Porsche co-drivers alongside him. Well, not alongside him, following him, Alessio Picariello. Picari is still bright yellow, bright red. And here we go. The safety car will lead round for the first of two formation laps. So a sighter for the drivers, and the track is already considerably drier. In fact, it looks dry to the eye, but an hour ago it was a deluge here. Huge amounts of lightning striking all around the circuit. And, uh, the, but the track dries very quickly, not just because it's uh, the, the temperature, but it's also with 30 cars going around with these great big slick Pirelli tyres on. They suck a lot of the moisture out of it. Quite a few cars in the background of the shot. They're tiptoeing through turn two, so less grip than they might have thought, but they're desperately trying to get the heat in their tyres, and having this extra formation lap will certainly help. So, pole position, Frankie Chen Kong Fu, FAW Audi team there, and Bo Yuan in Origin Motorsport. It was R&B racing last year, change of name. Look, they're third on the grid as well with Velu. And James Yu, one of the winners of last year's two races here to conclude the 2023 season, starts fourth. Then uh, Prince Abu Bakar Ibrahim, and alongside him, uh, Sri Lankan racer Ishan Pires, who's really starting to make a splash in this championship. Alessio Picari Yellow has been put down as the starting driver of the Absolute Racing Porsche. Andre Canard alongside the best of the Ferraris. We've got three 296 GT3 Ferraris. You can see Jatong Liang behind on 10th uh, position also has one. And then immediately 11th, the third of them, LM Corsa. Alongside the best of the Lamborghinis, that's car number six. Craft Bamboo Racing, second of their. Uh, Mercedes in 13th on the grid and a lot of new faces down here. Volgas Motorsport, first Korean team in the championship. Great to have D-Station racing with us, such supporters of the series. The team from just down the hill from Fuji Speedway. Phantom Global Racing, they made a splash last year. And a, a couple of cars. Look out for Vutigorn in through Fubisak. 21st on the grid is not his natural starting place. Quite a few drivers had times taken away for exceeding track limits. And uh, Porsche Centre Okazaki, there we are, you know, always a feature in the championship. Japan Cup winners last year, down in 24th position. Setiwan Santoso is going to be busy. He's doing the entire race. He will have to come in. He has no co drive He'll have to get out of the car, get back in, and then go on and complete the hour. And another Ferrari further back, David, Chip, David Chipto Vientoru. Alekalu, Macanese racer. Andrew McPherson, AMAC Motorsports, such staunch supporters of the championship. And the final row of the grid, ANR with Vincenzo Sosperi, Lamborghini in 31st position and 32nd and last is the second yes Porsche Centre Okazaki are running two cars one in orange that's up the front of the grid and the second one with for Kiyoshi Uchiyama will be starting in 32nd position we should have had 33 but unfortunately we lost car number 14 the garage is still busy GTO racing team garage they're building up a brand new Porsche chassis withdrawn from today I have yet to find out if they're withdrawn from tomorrow but while the mechanics are here clearly they might as well finish building up the brand new car Well, it's interesting, when the cars were down on the grid, as Amy found out, the pole sitter, that's Frankie Chen Kong Fu, was indeed changing his tyres. It wasn't from slicks to slicks. He had arrived on wets, and even on the last go, you know what, it's properly dry. I thought he was one of the ones who'd go out anyhow on slicks, but that's on uh, pole position. However, I can give you a list of those who are near the front of the grid, and they're starting on wet weather tyres. I can offer you car number treble seven. That's D-Station Racing. I can offer you, car, and that's down in the uh, 17th position. Cars now just going onto their, you can see them coming into the final hairpin. They're going to go around for one further lap, but the clock will start, has started, and is ticking down. So we are actually racing, but no one can overtake until the cars come to the start finish line next time around. The safety car leads them down to turn one. I'm just going to go on down through the others who have started on wet weather tyres. Car number 13 is another one that's uh, started on wet weather tyres. Phantom Global Racing with uh, Sun Ching Su. Car number 93, which is uh, another Phantom Global Racing car, that's Vutikorn in through Fuvisac. Now, it's interesting, some of the ones down near the back are on slick tyres, uh, on wet weather tyres, so they're going to possibly have an advantage in the early laps. But then, as the track dries and dries and dries, that advantage will go away. But look, the safety car that is spray being kicked up as all of the cars are sucking the moisture bit by bit out of the surface. But what we're going to get with these cars largely running line astern is a dry line. And if you're going to try and overtake, no one's going to let you stay on the dry line. You're going to have to go on to the wet stuff. So what are the drivers thinking? Building heat into the tyres. There's the brand new career team, Full Gas Motorsport. Full Gas, full gas being full gas, full throttle. Uh, translation from the German, there it is. What, dark grey car, red door mirrors trying to pick them out. 
And uh, sorry, keeping on down the list as I get it, quite a few drivers are starting on wets, including uh, Prince Abu Bakar Ibrahim, starting very near the front of the grid, fifth on the grid. So uh, we'll have to keep watching out uh, for those that have gambled. I think it's a gamble, but look at the sky. Does that say rain to you? It says changeable weather, but I think we should be okay for this one hour race. But then again, we know here on the tropics that the rain can come in and very quickly, and it doesn't do light rain, it must be said. So, Alessio Picariello down as the drive. No, it is Anthony Liu. I think the graphic just picked up the wrong one. I was debating who was starting car number one, but it's last year's champion, Anthony Liu, will be starting that. This is the view on board for Prince Abu Bakar Ibrahim. He's got a new teammate this year, young Australian racer, Jordan Love. Come back after about five years making his mark in Europe and is going to be racing here and, uh, you know, has, has had some runs in Australia, his native country, which he's hardly ever raced in his uh, young professional career. But look, at that view, are we seeing much moisture coming off the track? Still a little bit as they work their way uh, down the slope through turns 12, 13, 14. 14 is the corner they're just about reaching now. There is the Prince of Johor. And that's the corner onto the long back straight. It mirrors the start finish straight. So the field now uh, getting into position, hanging back. This is the pole starter's prerogative because he's the one who can dictate when they go. He cannot be overtaken, he cannot be passed before the start finish line is reached. So. In the background, we have uh, the remainder of the 32-car grid. It comes on and on and on. Look at the manufacturers coming around. But it's Audi on pole position, Porsche alongside. Porsche in third, Audi in fourth position on the grid. Best of the Mercedes is fifth place. Now, Frankie Chen Kong Fu, he can't go, oh, there's not much grip. There's no grip on the grass, Frankie. But he, how fortunate is that? Had he gone on the grass, he couldn't be overtaken because he has to be the driver over the start-finish line first. And he's in that, he's actually slightly disrupted. They're chasing Bo Yuan, makes an advantage. It looks like the change if he's gonna come, he's gonna come for about the battle for third place, the second of the origin Porsches. No, he holds on, breaks deep into turn one, but how deep can you break into the first corner? Well, <laughs> driver in second place, Bo Yuan has braked too deep and he's gone off the circuit and he comes back on and he's still just ahead of his teammate. But for Frankie Chen Kung Fu, caution was the byword. He's made it into the first corner first. Oh dear, the challenge for third place has been broken up because as we saw on the previous formation lap, it's very, very tricky at turn number two. The track drops slightly, goes downhill, as it turns left, a big twitch from Prince Abu Bakr Ibrahim just held on to his Mercedes as that sinuous stretch of track that leads between turns four and five. Up they go into four. Second place is now the one that's hotly contested between the teammates. Wambo and Luwe, and they're really pressing on in their Porsches. The Audi's recovered. The fourth place Audi is just recovering. That uh, was a, a very twitchy moment for, for James Yu. He's got it back together. In fact, the only driver who doesn't seem to have had a twitch since we actually got over the start-finish line, as far as I can see, is Frankie Chen Kung Fu. But he did have that one, just leading into turn 15, the final hairpin, thinking about how he was going to control the start and touch the grass, but somehow kept it together. Two abreast further back. Right, this is a run between turn 8 and turn 9, going down to the tight left-hand hairpin and being challenged because the driver on the move is the driver in that number 6. Lamborghini, who's absolutely Bian Yi, he's picked it up. He started way down. He was row six. He was 12th on the grid. And here he is, that green Lamborghini with the blue and yellow stripes, challenging now for fourth place. But going wide, breathing in and getting the car back on the track. But he's picked up another place. So you know what we're seeing? We're seeing drivers who started on wet weather tyres finding an advantage in this early stage. But the others are on tiptoes. It's not a case of drivers not being suited to the, the degree of damp in the circuit. It's those who start on sick, or on slick, uh, sorry, on wet weather tyres who've got an advantage early on. So it's uh, near the front, 6.30, 66, treble seven, the station race, oh dear, the, oh, having got the advantage on those tyres, Bian Yi just slid a little bit wide. And really for the, oh, another, another driver car number 30, that's uh, getting a little bit twitchy into the hairpin, that's uh, Tao Chi. Tippy toe stuff with the drivers on slicks gobbled up and passed by those who are starting on wet weather tyres but their stint will probably end early as soon as it possibly can because these tyres will not be good after a while because the tread, treaded tyre gets hotter and hotter on the surface and then it starts to chunk but the surface of the tyre doesn't do doesn't perform in the way that everyone wanted to look a few more drivers just getting it very loose 
up at turn two. Car going backwards is car number four. That started third on the grid. That's Louvet. But if the track dries with each lap, you'll see the cars that are falling back, then being the ones that make progress. Oh, fantastic shot. Last year's champion, Anthony, champion Anthony Lou says, thank you very much indeed. And I've got him down as one of the drivers on slick tyres. So that was even more impressive. But maybe there's a bit of uh, subterfuge on the grid. Who was on what tyres? Did I tell you what the lead was? Four seconds, 4.2 seconds between Frankie Chen Kung Fu. So he did exactly what he needed to do. And of course, having kept in front of everyone else, anybody else having a twitch isn't any interest to him. He is not going to be interrupted, lose his momentum behind them. But I think as we look at this pack, we can say it's been well and truly shuffled. And those who started on wet weather tyres have the advantage for now. Who will they be able to hang on? We've seen the D-Station racing Aston Martin going very well indeed. That started um, somewhat down the grid, down in uh, 17th position, but that's up to 8th with Satoshi Hishino. Frankie Chen, Kung Fu. This is the car that's gone up into second place. Car number 6, Bian Yi, Chinese driver, starting 12th, clearly on wet weather tyres, but more so than just being on wet weather tyres. He's the driver who's making the work best, not just because he's got the pace, he also has been mighty traffic it's almost like he wasn't waiting for a second option he's now in the lead of the race and that at the start of the lap he's 4.2 seconds down he's moved ahead of frankie chong chen kong fu and i'll tell you the difference in their lap pace well for starters if he's going to cross the line what will visually be about six seconds clear he's gained six seven se sorry he'll be about two or three seconds clear by the looks of things and that will make a gain of seven seconds on one lap but how long can this last what a fantastic drive from uh, Bian Yi. Right, he's the new leader. His lap was eight, two minutes 16, and he gained ooh, very nearly seven and three quarter seconds on that lap. Look in the background, the spray being kicked up. There is still moisture being extracted from the track. And for those on slicks, they've just got to be patient. D Station Racing, as I said, started way down the grid, got up to eighth. Well, that was last lap. That's old hats. Up to third place now. Wet weather tyres clearly working for Satoshi Hashino. Driver in behind is car number 30. Craft Bamboo Racing's Dao Chi, one of the many drive Chinese drivers in this field. And likewise, he is making his wet weather tyres work very, very well. So the only anomaly in this, really, the only driver hasn't plunged down the order. He's not in the lead anymore. He's Frankie Chen Kong Fu. He had built up that advantage, but everybody else on the wet weather tyres, who is using the wet weather tyres, who started on those rather than the slicks, is making great gains now, is advancing all the time. Car 87, reference, started on the front row of the grid. Bo Yuan's down in fifth at the start of the lap. He's been caught by last year's champion, Anthony Liu. They're weathering the storm. Nearly 13 minutes into this race, and the, and the start has been absolutely astonishing. Brilliant getaway from Frank, Frankie Chen Kong Fu, but those on the wet weather tyres rather than the slicks. And maybe Frankie, who was on the grid on wet weather tyres until they changed them when he was sitting on pole, is thinking, have we got this right? Why isn't the track drying more? Why is my pace nowhere near those around me? But he's still in second place. You can see on the graphic, Yi Cheng, Hoshino, Chao, Bo Yuan, Anthony Liu, last year's champion. Very, very bit of uh, tarmac down there. One of the cars making progress is the grey, number 19. It's the started, qualified really well, leading the AM class, and qualified in ninth overall. That's a Hiroshi Hamaguchi, the spirit of FFF racing. Used him in many manufacturers' cars over the years. So it's interesting to see him in Audi, but uh, just sliding a little bit wide. And uh, making moves up the order now is car number 13 which is a Phantom Global Racing Porsche. It's blue and largely gold with Sun Jing Su at the wheel. Oh, Frankie Chen, Kung Fu, first until just before the end of the previous lap, just demoted by the new race leader, Bian Yi. He's now getting across the line in one, two, three, fourth, because D-Station Racing Aston Martin has uh, just moved past him and will be into turn one first. And Frankie Chen's going to fight, but have no hope of resisting a challenge around the outside from Tao Chi. Mercedes. Now, for point of reference, Frankie Cheng is lapping at 2 minute 23. The race is at 2 minute 15, just under 2 minute 15, 16 seconds. Now, Anthony Liu down in seventh place, tiptoeing. He's had to let about four or five drivers. Let's make it six. There goes another one past him. Those are the starters on wet weather tyres. But look, it is quite bright in the sky. 
not so much spray from those around. But it's still, even at points where most of the track looks is dry to the eye, the drivers are still finding points where just that isn't the grip that they'd like. This is the wonderful sweep from turn five, it'll feed up towards turn six. You can just hear Anthony Lou being quite cautious, the drivers never like getting out onto the curbing when it's wet, it just seems to hold the moisture and suddenly makes it very slippery. It's interesting, that part of the circuit, five, six, seven, is where there seems to be the most damp in the air. You can see the windscreen wipers still being used because uh, the number 66 Mercedes, which made a, a massive charge up the order in the Silver Amp class, just uh, spraying his screen, and that's uh, Min Heng. So it's caution, it's balance. Here's our race leader, Bian Yi, just looking supremely comfortable going faster with every lap, I started to think, I was wondering what the tipping point would be when those uh, treaded tyres would start to become too warm and their pace would fall away, but all he has to do is get to 25 minutes into this race, and then it probably would be right to go to slicks, but he can also go, right, that's it, we've done our stint on wet weather tyres, I've built you a lead, and uh, bring that Lamborghini into the pits to, to wave to uh, Vincenzo Suspiri, and now you can see he's seeking out the damp, he desperately doesn't want his tyres to start delaminating pits is Italian racer Eduardo Liberati, so he'll be very, very pleased indeed. What's the gap at the end of six laps? Nearly ten seconds. D-Station racing, Satoshi Hoshino, there he is in second overall. Neat, tidy. Vantage looking as good as ever in that dark green race livery. And it's uh, Porsche leading, Aston Martin second, Mercedes third, because we've got car number 30 still in third, pla in third place, which is Chinese racer Tao Chi. There he is. A couple of the Mercedes look quite similar to the front end. We've got a couple of white and pink Mercedes this year. And third overall, there it is, Craft Bamboo Racing. Still makes fantastic sound, that Mercedes. Oh dear, I think to my eye, that's the first spinner in the trick edition. It's Harmony Racing, and that's uh, Liang Jia Tong, who's sharing with Liu Ke Liu. But unfortunately for him, he's just not only kissed the gravel and it's up at turn 15 the final corner of the hairpin the left hand hairpin that leads you onto the start for the straight and don't forget right at the start at the end of that second formation that uh, when we had our then race leader our pole starter frankie chen kong fu come up there and he was thinking about how he's going where he's going to plant the throttle and he kissed the grass but didn't go across it and into the gravel talking of frankie chen kong fu his lap times are coming down on the slick tire he's fallen to that fourth place but he actually Still losing time to those who've gone past, but he's still comfortably clear of the best of the rest. And the best of the rest is uh, driver car number 87, the one that started outside him on the front row, Bo Yuan. And he's got a, a margin over that 87 Porsche of seven seconds. So Frankie Chen Kong's food is doing the hard work. And there's the AM class leader, Hiroshi Hamaguchi, in 12th place overall in that grey Audi. Waved yellow flag. Some of the drivers slowed down a little bit more than others down there for that. Certainly the black Porsche with the green flashes up inside uh, backed off rather more. And that's Absolute Racing's Ishan Pires, who started sixth on the grid, but uh, wasn't one of those blessed with uh, the rain tyres for the early laps. So it does seem that those that went out on, uh, as we have, abated pace, full course yellow. That's where everyone's slowing down so much. At first it was a yellow, then it was full course yellow. So for anyone on wet weather tyres, it means running at a baited pace will be keeping the life in them. They shouldn't have to go seeking any vestige of damp because no one can gain any advantage. Everybody runs at a, a, a limiter-induced maximum pace under full course yellow. And that's for the Ferrari from Harmony Racing to be pulled away from the gravel trap up at turn 15. So the margin between first and second just wait, is 20, best part of 25 seconds. You can see it's an 80 kilometer an hour full course yellow limit. Oh, 79.9, 80, 79.8. Russell, this is riding on board car number 44, the Folgas Motorsports Porsche with uh, Han Ming Wang at the wheel. The team from Korea gaining experience as they go. Great to have them on board for 2024. And for reference, just outside the top 20, 20 second position overall, waiting for the full course yellow to come away. Nobody can pit. Not at the 25-minute point in this race. We've got another just under five minutes remaining. So 
this has aided the life of those tyres, the, the treaded tyres, the wet weather Pirellis would definitely be going off. Many would have said it was intermediate territory, but... Um, and full course yellow is removed, the green flags are waved and off we go all over again. Race leader Bianchi, he can be immensely pleased with his stint. The team, Vincenzo Sospiri, guessed right, put him on the right rubber, started down in 12th on the grid. And he's just putting up a, a masterclass of how to go well on these tyres. He was uh, GT World Challenge Asia, amateur champion last year for Climax Racing in a Porsche. Using that experience very well indeed, but uh, really it was all about just knowing how hard to push. Once the team had plumped the wet weather tyres, the drivers knew they had to maximise it, but they also had to be cautious to go too hard too soon. And you could really start to destroy them. As I said, the pit window will open in under five minutes' time, so probably a couple more laps all of the runners. Some may want to stay out a little longer, but I'd have thought this track is drying, definitely, and uh, you'd want to do a longer stint on dry weather tyres, on the slick Pirellis. So those on wet weather tyres will come in ASAP once that pit window opens. 66 and 93, change of position because Vutigorn in through Fuversack in the Porsche has just been demoted. He's lost sixth position uh, to car 66, which is the, the Mercedes of uh, Min Heng. Trying with a young Australian racer, Jalen Rowbottom. So Jalen will take over that car one position further up the ladder. And in the background, Anthony Liu. Just see the yellow and red Porsche of last year's champion, now with Absolute Racing. And he's uh, only fallen in one position. That's good, because I think he was one of the runners out on uh, slick tyres. So he will probably stay out as long as he can as the track dries, and then he'll uh, come in for Alessio Picariello to take over in the second part of this race. Now, incident between a couple of cars uh, under investigation. It's cars number 63, which is one of the Vincent Vincenzo uh, Tospiri Racing Lamborghinis, that's Joe Bijuang who started that, and car 563, which is another Lamborghini. Well, looking at the way the track is divided, look at the graphic, you can see the three timing sectors, always traditionally done by us, and the car who's fastest is fastest in all three. No doubt it's our race today, yes it is, the best lap of the race so far, 2 minutes 15.885 seconds, about a second clear of the best of the rest. Uh, Satoshi Hoshino, who was second, but now has fallen back to fourth. Had that really good stint, slightly interrupted uh, by, by uh, the release after the safety car, car. But it's actually very close for third place, because now Mercedes, number 30, is up into, into third. And Frankie Cheng Wong Fu has gone back past Satoshi Hoshino. Remember that our pole man started on slicks. That's very, very impressive from Frankie Cheng Wong Fu. But Bianchi pulling clear, and there is... The example 66 is on wet weather tyres and uh, making it look quite easy. And 93, actually, as I checked down my list of who started on wet weather tyres, also on the wet rubber, on the treaded rubber. One of the Ferraris there, the one just in front of the Lamborghini, that's uh, Andre Canard. Car covered in ducks. Canard is French for duck. Fantastic livery. Some of these cars you can't always pick them up when they go around, but certainly a lot of thought has gone into that one. pit window opens in just over a minute and a half one of the other Ferraris car number 75 that's worked its way up the order because that starts it down I have to count up starting way down the tail of the field Garrett that's David Chipto Bientoro who started down on row 14 14 out of 16 so some have certainly gained Actually, those are down towards the second half of the of the second ten of cars. They're so down towards the 20th position. But the driver who's not faulting, in fact, on this lap, he's going faster still. Lost, obviously, with the full course yellow, everyone lost lap pace for about a lap and a bit. Oh dear, five six three already under investigation has uh, taken a bit of a rotation there. That's Akira Mizutani who started in penultimate place on the grid. There was the question of uh, contact with uh, 63. Two Lamborghinis takes two to tango. They were both Lamborghinis, but up there. I think it was a simple spin up at turn 15. So Bianchi can't come into the pitch yet, another 30 seconds he can. Car 93 is um, still going very well indeed. That's Vutigorn in through Fuversack. He started down out in uh, 21st position on the grid. I said that was uh, not his natural place. 
but uh, certainly with wet weather rubber he's uh, made his way up the order even without it even if they'd all started on slicks Futicon would certainly have got that AAS Porsche Thailand car further up the order he's running fourth in Pro-Am now let's just refresh refresh what is what we've got silver runners we've got silver AM runners Pro-Am runners it's all to do with the, the way you rank your drivers and AM runners and the best of the AMs just trying to see uh, where that is it's still Hiroshi Hamaguchi in the 12th place overall but the it's the Pro-Am crews leading the way with uh, Bian Yi leading from uh, car number 30 which is still running very nicely indeed in the hands of Tao Chi and the first of the pit callers is the pit window open it is just open a few seconds ago Porsche center Okazaki first one into the pit lane and it looks like it's number 22 Mercedes coming in from Climax Racing but look at this Audi Porsche Porsche Ferrari this is GT3 racing at its best nose to tail trying to find grip trying to find pace trying to overtake up front, James Yu still hanging on in that number 41. Give it a push, give it a shove, but don't move it off the track. Getting very tight indeed. But he goes through turn 10 and up the hill. One of the Kraft Bamboo Racing uh, Mercedes giving it a rub. This is a point on the circuit where you start to drop down. It used to be very, very bad for rivers running across on wet days. But now it's busy in the pit lane. Certainly those who started on wet weather tyres will be finding their tyre life is going away. But I think the really best or wet weather tyres can make them last a lap or two longer because they've still got the performance advantage and our race leader's just done an even better faster lap. That's Bian Yi now 18 seconds clear. But that's been beaten. Ah, this. The pit window has just opened, but the pendulum has swung because the driver in second place is now Frankie Chen Kong Fu, who has set the fastest lap of the race. So the slick tyres are now the ones to have, but for a lot of people, it's just not going to come quite in time. But you can be sure every car getting a tyre change in the pit lane, will be going on to slick tyres. Cars still pouring in the background, number four, diving into the pits, that's the Porsche Origin Motorsport, Wei Lu, that started in third position on the grid. Frankie Chen Kong Fu is the driver, really lighting up the timing screens. And Bo Yuan as well, car number 87, that started outside the front row, also on slick tyres, is uh, also really, really picking up the pace now. So you have to say, when you just try to think on the grid, ah, oh, slippery, what tyres shall I put my drivers on? And you go, I think he's good enough to keep, keep it going on slicks. Hasn't really worked, because you get to this point, yes, they're working better than the wet weather tyres, but uh, there it is, even though the gap between the race leader and Frankie Chen Kong Fu has come down, it's still the best part of 19 seconds. That's a huge amount to play with in the second half of the race. It's very, very busy. Just saw the bright orange, elegant racing team Mercedes come in. Another new crew. There it is with the green flash on the door. The lone BMW stops right in front of it. And that's entered by Team KRC. Now, there's the mandatory time in the pits. This is the, the Lamborghini that went for a spin. ANR uh, Vincenzo Sospiri racing. That's down towards the tail of the order. And our race leader, Bian Yi, is he going to come in this time around? The pit window is open. His advantage was 18.77 seconds last time around. Looks so he's going on for one more lap. He's certainly still lapping. Just a whisker off the fastest lap race in this pace. Just waiting to see what his lap time was. To now. Those that pitted early will be coming out on slick tyres, and the first of those to pit was car number 30, the first of those at the front end of the field. It, remember, it was in about third place when it came in. Really, really good run uh, from Tao Chi. And now Canadian racer Daniel Morad, who's qualifying very well for tomorrow's race, comes out. The treble seven racing Aston Martin also was early, early to pit. Tomonubu Fuji is driving that, and it's effectively that second place and third place tucked in behind. Leo Yi Hong Lee, the green and white Porsche, pushing hard. And for these drivers, of course, it's their outlap. They're looking to see, you know, what are the conditions like? They're still pussyfooting around. But still, Bian Li leads the race, but has not pitted. Frankie Chen Kong Fu has not pitted either. Working for pace on the... Oh, dear, that Ferrari is just where Frankie Chen Kong Fu doesn't want it. He's the driver in second place, that number 36 Audi. And while the 296 Ferrari is getting up to speed with young German racer, 19-year-old Finn Gersitz, he really well, he doesn't have to get out of the way. He's had the pit stop, but uh, he's certainly holding up. Frankie Chen Kong Fu, oh, he's trying to get heat in his tyres, which doesn't really provide much option for Frankie to go to the left, to the right. So, um, well, certainly not making it easy for Frankie Cheng there. 
needs to get past. Is this going to be Frankie's in lap? I tell you what, his previous lap was the fastest lap race, two minutes, 12.6. That was uh, actually overtaken by James Yu, who did a two minutes, 12. The lap times are coming down and down. And bear in mind, in qualifying, uh, Frankie Cheng did a two minute, three second lap. That's how far off the ultimate pace they are. That's how damp this track has been. Yes, it looks pretty dry to the eye. Oh, well, a mistake from Finn Gersitz. Thank you very much, says Frankie Cheng Kung Fu. That's the fly out of the ointment. Yeah, I can guess it's uh, is just getting a feel for this circuit. He went to race here before getting a feel for. Well, of course, they had no wet weather running. That would have really aided, particularly the drivers who haven't uh, been here before. What's it like in the wet? Well, I'll tell you, what's it like in the wet? The person who can tell you that is the driver who went from 12th on the grid. He's just pitting now from the lead of the race. It was down to 16 seconds, had been as much as 24 seconds. It's Bian Yi. What a great run for him and Vincenzo Sospiri racing. And Eduardo Liberati is about to take over. But again, you don't have to hurry in the pit stops. It's just about really when you time them to fit within this 10 minute pit window opening time. Outruns Liberati. He'll, uh, because there's a 90 second minimum from pit in to pit out, you don't have to rush the pits off. It's a good safety feature there. Now, the first of the cars that's uh, emerged from its pit stop leading the run will be Daniel Morad, Canadian racer. Here is his car, car number 30, the Mercedes. That uh, was driven so well by Tao Chi in the opening stages of the race. This is running in the Pro-Am class. fastest lap of the race actually from another driver who has not pitted yet he's moved up to fourth overall it's LM Corsa and that's uh, Rio Agawa two minutes 11.1 seconds so slick tires and for those who are going out of them now phew, these times are going to come tumbling it's quite a good time to come in but those on the late in the pit window opening and we've still got three minutes a little bit of small change left the rover racing harmony Ferrari comes in. If you're on wet weather tyres at the start of the race, they were degrading and degrading quickly, so you come in early, which is uh, precisely what's happened for cars like car number 30 for Daniel Morad. That his car will be on slicks now, but certainly for, for Tao Chi, who started the race, it was a struggle on wet weather tyres, but great fun as they worked their way to the front of the field. But they wouldn't have wanted to go on for a lot longer. And the pit stop now complete. The number six about to come out to the track. Will he be in front when he gets out? I think he will be. Yes, he is. He can't accelerate yet. He's over the white line. Now he can accelerate. He's coming down towards pit out. But uh, number 30 has gained big, big time. Daniel Moran in second place. He's just on the right-hand side of your screen going into turn one. But he's got the heat in his tyres already. So the next uh, bit of the lap will be a case of the Mercedes getting closer and closer to Eduardo Liberati. And Eduardo not wanting to push too hard too soon. He wants some heat in those tyres. He's probably going to lose the lead, but through the long right-hander at turn three, they go into the compression, it swerves, it kinks a little bit there, up to a crest at turn four. You do the break-in and it flattens out. And the next few corners are fabulous sweepers, but I think he's just weathered this storm. He needed to get ahead into turn four and still be ahead in turn four, and he is. So Liberati settling down, Daniel Murad knowing he's got to hassle him now for he does exactly the right thing. Going through turn six, he takes the lead, pounces, because the Italian was on the balance there, just not sure how, how hard to push on the outlap. Particularly if he did drop it off by pushing too hard too soon or slid into a gravel trap, that would undo all the good work from Bianchi. Not the good work, the sensational work from Bianchi, who roared up from 12th on those wet weather tyres, used them better than anyone else to put that Lamborghini into the lead of the race. Just double checking to see uh, what the best laps are now. Oh, 563, by the way, the one that had a spin uh, has been given a drive through penalty for colliding with one of the other two Lamborghinis in the team, also run by Vincenzo Suspiri Racing, and that was uh, Joe Bijuang's car. So he's got the drive through. Bijuang cleared of any issues in that matter. Riding on board now with Alessio Picariello, took over from last year's champion Anthony Liu. They were rivals last year because Alessio Picariello was a Porsche driver racing against a Mercedes driver, but they've been teamed up together and pushing on. Bastian Boos is the driver in front, and he knows a Porsche very well indeed as the reigning Porsche Super Cup champion, the, the young Dane. Very, very impressive. Oh, <laughs> how late can you break into turn 15? Just about arrested as the car snapped to the right, was going to go to the left. 
and Essie of Yellow. The Belgian racer tucks in behind the Dane, down the start, finish straight they go, and that should put them up into seventh and eighth positions. All the pit stops have been done, and the last couple of cars to come out were car number 41, James Yu handing that over to uh, Akash Nandi, the only Malaysian driver in the race, just around the tail of the top ten. Let's see if they can get a point. Points go down to tenth place, by the way. Oh, we were looking at Alessio Picariello settling in. Well, here's come. Oh, well, here we go. Talking about lap pace, but uh, 36 started on pole position. We had number 30 go into the lead of the race, but since coming out of the pits, having done that first stint on dry weather tyres, car number 36 is pushing really hard. Adelie Fong trying his utmost to see what he could do. Came out in front, but suddenly was uh, jumped by uh, number 30. So Daniel Morad's done the hard yards. He went from. Uh, second to first and then he had the late pit changing uh, tire changing car number 36 come out in front of him deposed it so for the audi driver uh, from hong kong he's got to think where and when but that number six a lamborghini hasn't dropped back very far at all got jumped when it came out of the pits because daniel Morad had to do it had to do it within the next few corners when he got onto the tail so four five got the move done out of turn six took the lead but now he's got another rival and a rival who is hot on his heels just looking down the gaps, trying to see if anybody else is really starting to make progress. Alessio Picariello is just saying fastest lap of the race, two minutes, 6.4, but he's he's quite some distance back. He's down in eighth position, but that's changing all the time. But this is the lead battle. You know what? The Lamborghini's coming back in the background of the shot there. We're going to have a three-car lead battle because certainly that green Lamborghini is getting closer and closer. The one in behind that is the one that uh, has had to have a drive-through penalty, so we can the second of those two green Lamborghinis. Right, who's got a bit of traction out of turn 15? Looks actually fairly even between all the top three. So, another lap will go on the board. That will make it 14 laps. That will make Daniel Morad in the lead of the race. Adelie Fong tucked in behind. Car number 36. The Audi just 0.472 of a second down. Another 1.2 seconds further back, slightly less, to Eduardo Liberati, who took over that number six Lamborghini and is going very nicely indeed. In fact, it's really a question of how Adelie Fong settles down. He came out just ahead of the 30 Mercedes, but that jumped him immediately. Now down the start, finish straight, still jockeying for position those first three runs. Well, the driver of car 30 who did the first into the race is Kao Chi, and Amy Azaru is with him in the pits. In the box of car number 30 with Kao Chi. So there was a moment before the start, whether you go slick or wet, and you decided to go wet tires, and congratulations, you're up there now. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, it was uh, my engineer's idea to stay on wet. I feel more comfortable on wet as well. And then um, we thought about going to slicks, but then I, I told my engineer that uh, I don't think the condition is good for uh, slicks because it's still slippery and then it's quite wet in the back. So uh, we stay on, uh, on, wet, uh, on wet, and then uh, yeah, everybody on sticks, and then so I just made all the passes. Let's keep our fingers crossed. Sounds good. Thank you. Thanks to you. Thanks, Amy, down there with uh, Tao Chi, and um, of course it is great fun if you can do overtaking. That's what it's all about. And also just know you had that decision and you got it right. But now Daniel Morad is looking very, very strong indeed. Can Adley Fong? live with the pace at the front of the field. It's a margin of about seven tenths. No, actually, it's only about a half a second between them. And I thought the Lamborghini in third place was catching, and certainly Eduardo Liberati, as they come up the back straight that leads them to turn 15, the final corner of the lap, the left-hand hairpin. Looks like the top three are going to be covered by just slightly less than they were before. Now a little look up the inside, but not a serious look in that battle for the lead. Adley Fong tucks in, 87 Porsche, Bian Yi. Uh, closing in behind, so as they fight up front, well, let's see how it changes. Sorry, Leo Yi Hong Lee, a little bit of a mistake. Alessio Picariello is certainly the quicker of those Porsche drivers up into the hairpin. He's the driver who set the fastest lap of the race. That's been superseded, but he gained another position. And Bastian Bus is the driver demoted. But last year's Porsche Super Cup champion in 93, looking one way, looking another, but you don't think you're going to get past Alessio there going the long way around the outside and it really is at turn one but then they're almost immediately they have to tuck back into position drop down into the into the scent into the very tight left hander at turn two and then the track opens out again a great little battle and they're starting to catch the green aston martin up in front it's treble seven it's d station racing there it is just coming into shop there two porsches 
looking to see what they can do. Fastest lap of the race is the driver of the 87 Porsche, by the way, running in uh, fourth place overall. And that's Leo Yi Hong Lee. Two minutes, 5.3. Just remember, not long ago, the best car, as the slicks came good just at the time the car started to pit, they were doing two minute 12s. That is how much, uh, when you get out on a warmed up set of uh, Pirellis and really press on a track that's getting drier and drier. That's how the lap pace can come down. I think we're going to get uh, some times really tumbling. Oh dear, bad news for car number 19. That's the car that was leading the AM class. Oh dear, it's the spirit of FFF racing team. Audi, Hiroshi Hamaguchi started it. Mineki Akura is taking it over. That's a full course yellow penalty infringements. So they obviously went faster than 80 kilometers an hour. That's the number 19 and also car 25. Porsche's enter Okazaki Kiyoshi. Uchiyama and Tsubasa Kondo. So it'll be the driver who did the starting stint in those crews, and they will have a drive through. Full course yellow, and bear in mind it's 30 seconds in from out. Now, this is, wow, this is quite something. This is a race progression chart, bottom right hand corner of the screen. You can see eighth to fourth. It looks like a sort of something you'd find in a meteorologist's office, but uh, great to see not just uh, close racing, but also place changing. And that's what you get when you get. Uh, a track that's either dry going to wet, wet going to dry, and Sepang Circuit is just supreme as a happy hunting ground for, for drivers. There is plenty of space to, to make the overtaking manoeuvres. And right now, the driver really, really trying to do that is a driver in second place, the number 36 Audi, Adelie Fong, right on the tail. Now, Daniel Murad is starting to, uh, I thought he was starting to get away, but it seems Adelie is just gaining in confidence. But also, bear in mind, the driver in the middle in the Audi is the meat in the sandwich. He's got to look in his mirrors because all the time, Eduardo Liberati is there or thereabouts about uh, seven tenths of a second behind in third place. Top three cars covered by 1.2 seconds. Daniel Morad has the advantage, he's in the lead. Adelie Fong thinking hard, how can I make a move? But also knowing if he goes slightly wide, gets slightly compromised, then Liberati in the Lamborghini will pounce. What could make the situation more interesting? How about a driver who did the first half of the race on his own, and then got back in, he's doing their second stint, of course, you always got a driver on their own, but Seti Juan Santoso in that number eight, Aston Martin, run by Earl Bamba Motorsports. He's already done half a race, he's slightly tired, he's hot, he's bothered, and a slight, almost right for Adelie Fong to find a way past, but Daniel Morad, well, he's got a huge amount of experience as a Canadian driver, but this time he just gets slightly wrongly. Adelie Fong, great move for the lead of the race. Now Eduardo Liberati carrying a bit more momentum and trying to see where he can slot in. So it's been very, very busy indeed for Daniel Morad. Slightly compromised line there. <laughs> when I said the first three cars are covered by 1.2 seconds, it's about 0.2 of a second. But that was a great move from Adelie Fong to take the lead. You always sense when there's a back marker up ahead, one of the lead group is probably going to be compromised. You can't always tell who. And I think possibly a moment of slight indecision from Daniel Morad. And that was all that Adelie Fong needed to go past. And now is the Mercedes going to lose second place as well? Well, he's just got his nose in front, but he's on the tighter line into the hairpin. That's going to be tough. The better line was the wider line, and therefore the Lamborghini should sweep out of the corner all the better. Now it's got into the toe of the Mercedes. Adelie Fong getting a, well, what seems like a huge advantage down the start finish straight, but it's all about seeing who's going to be in second place down into turn one. In fact, even then, the Mercedes getting a bit of a slipstream off the Audi. Just looking to see if the front left-hand corner of the Audi has had a little bit of contact. Can't quite tell. It was the shape, shape and colour of the car, but uh, above the front left wing, it looks like the bodywork sticking up a little bit, unless my eyes deceive me. Oh, my rat's having to work very hard to hold on to second place. And uh, getting closer all the time. Fastest lap of the race last time around is the driver, Leo Yi Hong Lee, coming into the background of the shot. He's got to pass the green Aston Martin. He's doing that now. It's 87 is the, the green and white liveried Origin Motorsport Porsche. It started outside of the front row, one of the drivers on slicks early on. Lost ground, but he's now clawing it back in. Natalie Fong is definitely on uh, very, very good form. He's uh, trying to find an advantage, he's trying to pull clear. Second and third made very, very close indeed. Daniel Morad, Eduardo Liberati. bit of something flying up in the air. Maybe that was a bit of bodywork I thought was slightly loose on the front left wing of our race leader's Audi. Anyhow, second car of the line, Daniel Morad's Mercedes kicks that up into the air. Always slightly worry when you hit... Bit. Oh, and just a little bit of a wide moment there from Daniel Morad. Eduardo Liberati wasn't in... Not a driver probably in the habit of asking for a second opportunity, but jumps right through. 
Oh dear, car treble seven, it's pit stop, is under investigation, will be checked after the race. And that's the D-Station Racing Aston Martin. That's a shame because that's running in fifth place overall. Be a really good run for that Aston Martin racing crew from just down the slopes from uh, Fuji Speedway. Now, I'm just trying to look at um, Daniel Morad's splits. Well, the middle sector wasn't so good for him. Just wondering why his pace is falling away. He got, he got jumped by Adley Fong, but don't forget, they haven't had any wet weather running until they went out at the start of this race. And just maybe, just maybe, the Craft Bamboo Racing have not got him on a setup that's a uh, suspension setup that's quite suitable for a track that uh, is becoming drier and drier. But certainly, second place, first place was his, and then second. Now he's down in third and waiting to see his lap pace. No, oh, he's still competitive but he has fallen back a little bit because, in fact, he's just been passed by Lee Yi Hong Lee. Oh, this would be really, this would be very frustrating indeed. The treble seven Aston Martin is the one that's under investigation for possible pit stop infringement. Alessio Picariello, car number one. There it is, the middle of that bunch, right on the tail of the Aston Martin. Tomonubu Fuji holds on for now, but uh, Picariello and Bastian Boost getting closer and closer and closer. They're certainly flying in those Porsches. So Fuji, car treble seven, holding on to fifth place. Sixth place is Picariello's. And then Boos. And was it a puncture? This is my query. I think it was. We certainly saw a little bit of a struggle. We also saw that Mercedes go over a bit of something in the track. But I sensed the problem started slightly before. So I think it was a slow puncture. So that is why Daniel Morad just fell behind. Oh dear, we've had a clash. We've had the BMW from Team KRC and the number 40. BMW has now decided to, to pull off to the side of the circuit. Right, that was up at turn 15, so it's decided to come in the pits. So that was Marcus Winkelhock uh, gaining ground. And look, that BMW appears to be crabbing down the start finish straight. So I think there's been contact. And I think John O'Lester, who's driving the KRC BMW, has probably got a puncture there. That won't be a help, nor will the contact. So Adelie Fong now has a 2.4 second advantage to lead the race. Eduardo Liberati in the number six Lamborghini, holding on to second place. And then comes the battle. Yan Yi getting on, on the tail, but can't a watch for. One, no, both of the Porsches that were chasing the D-Station racing Aston Martin. Sorry, of course, the one they picked off is Setia Juan Santoso, two green Aston Martins. It's still Fuji in behind. In sixth place is Picariello. In behind him is Bastian Boos and Picariello. You could just tell he wasn't going to be waiting very much longer to make a move on Fuji. And anyone who passes Fuji gets the tip of my hat because Fuji is fantastic at overtaking. But there he didn't make the defence too difficult at all. The D-Station Racing Aston Martin, all he can do, the driver of that, Fuji is just flashes lights, plaintive flash of the lights, trying to disturb the driver in front. Now let's take a look at what happened to the number 89 BMW was the contact. Marcus Finkhoff coming up the inside, up the inside. Is there enough of an inside? No, a full blow. Marcus Finkhoff, no blame attached to John O'Lester there by the looks of things. He had to turn it at some point to the hairpin. But uh, both of them, their races uh, will be run. Both have uh, certainly Finkhoff in the pits for a second time. And I would suggest if John O'Lester makes it around, that would be him as well. So, the battle for fourth place now is Picariello and Boos. Boos in 93 is now in fifth, Picariello in fourth. What's their pace relative to those ahead, those that have been fighting? Pretty good, actually. These one hour races are having a flying pass, and particularly when you've got this changeable scenario of maybe half the field starting on wet weather tyres on a damp track, the other starting on slick, so you have the changing of the order. Then as the slick started to come good and the wet weather tyres started going in the opposite direction in terms of performance, everything swapped back round again. But the car that started on pole position fell to about fifth in the hands of a Frankie Chen Kong Fu as he weathered the storm as the wet weather tyres tyre shod cars went past. That's back in the lead of the race. Adley Vong certainly uh, putting in a great run there. He had to really do a bit of tough battling to get past Daniel Morad, but Morad's car, of course, had to dive in the pits uh, to have a puncture change, or a tyre change by those things. And that's dropped the Canadian down to 12th place and maybe slightly lower at the end of this lap as well. He'll then get up to speed, but uh, the best shot for Kraft Bamboo Racing appears to have gone out of the window. Fong completes 20 laps, three seconds clear of Eduardo Liberati. Here he is. Yes, you can see that bodywork just uh, 
above the front left wheel has obviously had a little bit of contact it's not quite how the aerodynamics had wanted sticking up a little bit there but uh, clearly nothing untowards in terms of the in terms of the car's performance and Adelie is going to be counting the laps down as I said his teammate Frankie Chen Kong Fu has been in the series for a very long time indeed but only won once that was back in 2018 so it's high time as far as uh, Frankie Chen Kong Fu is considered to see if he can get another win in the bag quite a gap between third and fourth there's third position car number 87 Leo Yi Hong Lee we heard from him before the start of the race down with Amy Azawa on the grid started on the outside of the front row fell down because it wasn't starting the race on wet weather tires but slicks and now is starting to catch the car in front Eduardo Liberati can the number six Lamborghini that did start the race on wet weather tires get through to the end of this race still in second place nine and a half minutes remain leader in the AM class after a problem for the 19 crew this British FF racing team is another great car but it's the Ferrari number 75 started by David Chipto Toro, now driven by Christian Colombo and it's down as the lead AM car in 21st position overall four second advantage over the spirit of FFF racing team Audi now driven by Mineki Okura so well from the point of view of Garage 75 maybe they can hang on to the end and that's uh, a matter that's uh, certainly been considered by several drivers up and down the field I mean there's Super Yellow is used to, accustomed in this championship to do overtaking but Bastian Boos putting in a very very good account of himself tucked in behind in this battle for fourth place it was a while ago that those positions swapped but Boos is clearly a very very quick learner indeed well in fact his racing record as Porsche Super Cup champion uh, tells you all you need to know in that and now he's really he's, he's literally nibbling the tail of Picariello's number one entry for absolute racing there goes Picariello's Porsche through in fourth place lapping consistently at 205 206 in fact that was the best lap of Bastian Boos's race in the number three giving chase made his mark about four years ago 2020 to be precise in the European GT4 series Pro-Am champion and uh, certainly once he shifted across to racing Porsches has been super super impressive and as they go around they're clearly with nine minutes remaining or under eight minutes remaining now going to be nose to tail for the remainder of the race I was just looking we have a new fastest lap of the race two minutes 4.9 seconds it's the driver in one two three four seventh position Lauren Heinrich but uh, he has a big margin to catch the driver in front of him, which is the treble seven Aston Martin. I don't think he's going to make 13 seconds up in the remaining seven and a half minutes. So it's counting down time to the end of the race. This battle between 93, which is Bastian Bus, the blue and uh, gold Porsche, and the yellow and red Porsche of Alessio Picariello, ought to go all the way to the finish. But uh, unless Eduardo Liberati in the number six Lamborghini can pick up his pace, it looks quite comfortable for Adelie Fong. He's 2.6 seconds clear. The clock continues down towards the end of the hour what's actually slightly difficult for these two fighting drivers is the Lamborghini they want to lap is now in the hands the 563 ANR entry has changed over from Akira Mizutani to Yuki Nomoto who's been very very handy on the European racing team for the past four or five years so he's going to be running the same pace as they are so that'll be slightly frustrating for Alessio Picariello onto another lap goes Adelie Fong down in the pit lane in fact I think the pit garage is almost right under my commentary position I think uh, Frankie Chen Kong Fu ought to be comfortable but you just never know because that's first second and third in shot here comes fourth fifth and in fact Alessio Picariello and the driver chasing across the line the blue and gold Porsche have just picked off the 563 Lamborghini of Yuki Nomoto I think he saw the flags got a message from the team you're a lap down let them go you can almost match their pace but unfortunately uh, you you took over the car when it was quite a long way down the order plus it had the drive through penalty such a drop down to the apex in turn two you can really see the car bossing out, bossing out as they hit the apex on the inside of that left hander well a cracking battle for second place I think Yuki Nomoto would enjoy watching it and um, not too far behind is Tomonobu Fuji in now down in sixth place but there is still a question mark over 
possible pit stop infringement for these station racing Aston Martin. There it is, just at the back of your shot. It does seem at this stage that Adley Fong is doing what he needs to do. Protecting a lead of two and a bit seconds in the number 36, which is the FAW Audi Sport Race, Asia Racing Team Audi. The R8 LMS GT3, so long a popular car all around the world in GT3 racing. And in fact, the Porsche 911 GT3R has been very, very popular on the race. Asian racing team has seen as well as the European scene. And these two drivers are uh, showing great craft. Alessio Picariello in fourth, Bastian Booth in fifth. Now, another couple of cars that are very, very close indeed. Car number 41. This is Akash Nandi, and he's got Fabian Schiller in the 88 Mercedes all over his tail. 88 is one of the Kraft Bamboo racing cars, and in the closing stages of the race, it's an uh, advantage to the chaser, but we're dealing tenths of a second, and for Akash Nandi doing a very good job. I thought it would be good if he could get points in his home race circuit, and he's using that experience in the uh, yellow, black, white, and grey Audi there. Neat, tidy, must be said. Got to be precise, because Fabian Schiller, he's had wins in this championship over the years. He will pounce where he, absolutely where and when he can. Coming up onto the tail of Setia Juan Santoso in the, in the number eight Aston Martin. He's the one who went solo, did the first half of the race and the second half of the race as well. Don't know if that's the plan for the entire season, but coming here to Sepang for the opening round of uh, Fanatec GT World Challenge Asia for 2024, he decided to go solo. We're not complaining, he gave us a second Aston Martin in this race. Three and a half minutes and a few seconds extra remain in this race. So the final two laps, I would think, for our race leader. 2.7 seconds clear now. Certainly not 2.7 seconds between Picaro Yellow in the number one Porsche. We're looking at being chased so hard by Bastian Boost in the 93. Rival teams, different colours. Both Porsches being driven very, very impressively indeed. And those two corners where drivers are consistently running wide. But they're being watched. A lot of turn six is the corner that uh, a lot of people are running, being pinged and worn for running wide. The right. Incident involving car number one and car treble seven. That's uh, car number one is the Anthony Lou, now Alessio Picariello driven Porsche. And car treble seven is the Aston Martin from D Station Racing under investigation for collision at turn 15. That's the hairpin, the last corner of this uh, 15 turn lap. Oh dear, and car number 296 has been offered a, not offered, given a drive-through penalty for contact at the same corner, T50, turn 15. And uh, that was with 911, which is the absolute racing Porsche. Started by Yishan Pires, the driver from Sri Lanka, then passed on to Tanat Satyan Tirakul. And that is down, off, down in 27th position, so clearly delayed by that moment. And there is 911 in the background of the shot, just being lapped by race leader. Adelie Fong. Adelie, long time Audi racer, in fact, was the Asian Audi R8 champion 2013, but uh, certainly finding a sweet spot now in this GT3 series. Fanatec GT Asia. Shouldn't have much time to go, 1 minute 45 to go. Frankie Chen Kung Fu, yeah. Relax, the lead is two and a half seconds. Frankie, the gap's coming down, but it's all right. It's all under control from Adelie Fong. Looking in his mirrors, the car he needs to look for is a bright green Lamborghini. It's not in shot, it's not in shot. It's not the car behind him, it's the car in the background. Car number six, maybe gaining a tiny bit, but uh, surely too little too late. Too late. One minute 19. Now I watched a race a couple of weekends ago where a car on the Nürburgring Nordschleife backed off on its final lap, had an eighth a bit second advantage, backed off too much and was overtaken between the final corner and the finish line. He was worried about having to go on to another lap and it cost him, lost by 42 thousandths of a second. I'm sure Adley Fong will have been aware of that and the team will be keeping him for, informed. Will you complete this lap and one more? Where are you relative to the end of the hour? We've got 50 seconds remaining. Oh, a little bit of a twitch there. Oh, don't lose your call now. OK, that was uh, down the sweepers, uh, 12, 13, he's gone through 14, got it all back together again. 
weaving. Well, at this rate, he's going to get to the... Well, the Lamborghini's getting closer and closer. It's 2.5 seconds down. Do we think that Adley Fong thinks he's got a puncture? Is that why he went wide as he went down the slope and off the circuit, rejoined the circuit? He's going to have to do another lap. 16, 15, 14 seconds. He didn't complete the one hour. Now he's got to do this final lap. His advantage is down to 2.1 seconds or 2.092. This is the final lap of the race. Any thought of having a slightly deflating tyre has to be put out of Adelie Fong's mind. And for Eduardo Liberati, this is a little bit, a bit of sucker. I'm closer. It's a visual thing. It's also on the clocks as well. And then uh, Leo Yi Hong Lee, not close enough. He's another two and a half seconds back in third place. So I think we know the identity of our top three, but the question right now is, can Eduardo Liberati in that number six Lamborghini get onto the tail of Adelie Fong? What is in front of Fong? What traffic could be there to interrupt his flow? And indeed, has that number 36 Audi got a slow puncture? Or is it nothing? Is it just a figment of his imagination? Looking at the timing splits, haven't got to the first one. The first timing split around the lap will be approached very soon. Go through turn five, through turn six. It's just before turn seven. It's coming up. Did you notice windscreen wipers going there? It's about to lap the number 52 Silver Am entry Mercedes of uh, Climax Racing. That's Li Li Chow. Maybe conditions are changing. I can't see any rain falling out of the commentary box window. But halfway around this final lap, only a few more quarters to go. Out of nine, up to ten. Needs to put that pink and white Mercedes out of his way. Needs to put it preferably between him and the chasing Lamborghini. But you know what? The first timing sector of the three. There is under a hundredth of a second of a difference between them, but Adley Fogg not waiting for a second invitation. Down the inside he goes. This is the point of the circuit where he ran off last time around. This time around, down the slope. Turn 13, negotiated on the track this time. Turn 14, likewise, can run a little bit wide if he wants to. Surely, yeah, all is fine. Action stations, as you were, charging on towards the finish. It'll be a fantastic way for the number 36 entry from FAW Audi Sport. Asia racing team started from pole position by Frankie Cheng Kong Fu taken over. It was on dry weather tyres. It struggled in the early stages of the race, but Frankie Cheng Kong Fu did a fantastic job. They've bounced back. They've got to the front, and Adelie Fogg will take the first win of the 2024 season in the Fanatec GT World Challenge Asia, powered by AWS. In second place, the green Lamborghini lights flashing. Eduardo Liberati, and not too far behind, another two seconds down in third place is car number 87. Alessio Picariello just coming through now in the yellow and red Porsche in fourth place, but boy, oh boy, has that been a shadow on his tail. Number 93, Bastian Boost making a real splash and uh, looking to see the Aston Martin D-Station Racing finishes in sixth position. Lauren Heinrich comes through in seven. Car number 41, Akash Nandi. The Malaysian driver on home soil. Where's he going to be? In the top ten, yes. Fabian Schiller comes in eighth. Akash Nadi, there he is, coming round in ninth place overall. And the top ten ought to be completed by Jordan Love. If it's the treble eight, the triple eight car coming through in the background. He does exactly that. He was the one sharing with uh, Prince Abu Bakar Ibrahim. So points at the start of the season. And remember, the top three runners will have a penalty tomorrow penalty will be served in their mandatory pit stop. Car 75, leader in Anne, they got ahead of Spirit of FFF racing team and uh, heading to class victory. Garage 75, David Chipto Biantoro started and Christian Colombo bringing that through to the finish. So the first points on the board for them for the season, the first class victory. Well, what a race of intrigue. It certainly went up and down and many a team would be going if only we'd put wet weather tyres on for the first half of the race, but you never can tell. There we are, and victory in the bag. Have to do it all over again tomorrow, but a very, very good start. Christian Colombo will be delighted with that. And uh, just to confirm, number 36 now coming up to report back to Parc Ferme. It's our winner from the silver class as well, and they carry, that was impressive because they carry an extra 25 kilos in the car if you've got two silver rank drivers and Adelie Fong. The job done. You know what? I think they've gone. They went for an extra lap. I thought they might be reporting into uh, Park Ferme. They've had so much fun that the first, uh, certainly the first three drivers, <laughs> have, have gone on one more time. The Pro Am class winner was the Lamborghini in second place. So a silver winner for Adelie Fong and Frankie Chen Kong Fu, Eduardo Liberati, 
in second and the third of the class is Silveram is the third car on the track nice bit of a uh, class by class at the top and just to, to reinforce the top am car was Christian Colombo finishing in 22nd position overall but there's our pro-am winner Eduardo Liberati and a lot of those drivers really had to be on tiptoes after that both before at the start of the race if they were on slicks and just after the pit stops they came out waited wanting to push on very hard but uh, just had to have a feel of the track it looked dry but certainly didn't feel that way for them we've got a couple of possible post-race penalties coming certainly uh, some matters for the stewards to look at but uh, there as we look at car number 87 Leo Yi Hong Lee he'll be delighted with that because uh, they started in on slicks on the front row they thought about putting on uh, wet weather tyres but uh, they, they uh, braved it out and uh, came away with third place and uh, victory in the silver am class which is the new class for 2024 and certainly with a field of 32 runners you might as well split into as many classes as you possibly can so all the photographers are, and camera crews are waiting for our top three finishers to, to land at their feet at the entrance of the pit lane but alas they were so enthusiastic they've done that extra lap having just too much fun well, that was an interesting start to the season. And again, you can see the front and left, just a little bit, a little bit of bodywork just above that front left wheel. Now, I wonder, with a lap and a half to go, we had Adelie Fong just going off as he ran down this very part of the circuit, turn 12 into turn 13. At that point, he ran off. And I wonder if that bodywork had rubbed enough to give a little bit of a puncture. But the way the car was behaving, it actually suggested the puncture was on the front right rather than the front left. And then he decided all was OK. And he pressed on and uh, got to the finish. One in the end by 2.1 seconds. You only need to win by 0.1 of a second to take victory, but uh, job done. And for the FAW crew, they'll be delighted with their flying start. Certainly when we heard from Frankie Cheng before the race, he was really very confident indeed they came here with a good setup. There was no wet weather running for any of these drivers ahead of uh, qualifying or the race here, but uh, certainly they adapted very, very well indeed. Different race tactics, but uh, for FAW Audi Sport Asia racing team, the right one and a really, really great performance from both of their drivers, from Frankie Chen Kong Fu, who got the ball rolling, and now brought in by his teammate Adelie Fong. They will be very, very happy indeed with the start of their 2024 season. The car in third place actually beat them back to uh, the pit lane, and that was uh, Leo Yi Hong Lee, car number 87. Uh, green and white Porsche, Origin Motorsport, yes, new for this season. R&B Racing was the, the team that ran them last year. Same team, different name, but uh, Wambo and Leo Yi Hongli. But there, come, come 36, comes to a stop under the victor's ar victory arch. And the number six Lamborghini is about to park in the wrong place. It's being flagged around to come and join them and complete the top three positions. But, uh, oh, a little bit of happiness and a whole lot more. Adelie Fogg making a, a, a real roar as he gets out to greet Frankie, Lee, Frankie Chen Kong Fu. One finger up famous win for them an FAW Audi team but they've got to do it all over again tomorrow but great job in those really really tricky conditions easier to make a mistake than to get it right the th second place Lamborghini there it is car number six comes in and parks up as well so isn't it great first race of the season 32 cars eight manufacturers 24 teams three different makes of cars in the top three positions finishing positions they're also in three different classes silver combination took victory a pro-am combination the number six Lamborghini took second and a silver am combination in third place in that Porsche on the left hand side of your screen so that's GT3 racing at its very very best and you can see down in the bottom of the shot the 87 crew congratulations each other Wambo who started and Leo Yi Hong Lee who drove really well to get it back up to the sharp end of the field and of course each of these cars is going to have to struggle really hard to get to a podium tomorrow because the car that won will have an extra 15 seconds at a pit so but look Adelie Fong looking very very happy indeed a victory in Fanatec GT Frankie Chang's done it before but it was in 2018 they're now down with Amy Azawa and hopefully with uh, little further ado let's go down to, to are very very happy winners with Amy fantastic job gentlemen Paul to win on the very first race of the season how do you feel congratulations you brought it back safely home yeah amazing feeling um, I haven't raced in such a high level competition since uh, 2018 so to be able to come back and do it on the first race um, when I left out of the pits I had no idea where I was and then they said you got to overtake the AMG for the win so 
yeah, I tried everything I could. Uh, yeah, having raced here since 2007 really helped. So, yeah, we managed to survive, keep it in one piece, and uh, yeah, keep out of the we won uh, the weather conditions. Yeah. Fantastic comeback! Congratulations, Frankie. Oh my God, you started with slick tires and you kept it up there. You must be good at ice skating, I guess. How was your strain? It must be crazy. It was extremely difficult, actually, really, really tricky condition, and uh, I actually I almost spun even before the race start. So, yeah, but big thank you to uh, to Adley and also to the entire team, you know, coming, you know, coming as a as a team, you know, doing the first race in the GTWCA and uh, winning the already overall result is, is actually dreaming, you know, and uh, but obviously the level is really, really high and we don't expect this uh, happening every race, but uh, so we're going to really enjoy this win. Wonderful pull to win. Congratulations again. Thank you very much, Amy. A win is a win is a win, but when you do it in such tricky conditions and when you're having to guess that, you know, what strategy you should do, what tyres you should fit, and they were right on the edge, but uh, there was confidence from Frankie Chen Kong Fu and Adelie Fong, as he said, you know, hasn't been in top level since uh, before the pandemic, and he's really slotted right back in, and I'd actually say at a higher level than ever before, so uh, full marks to that pair, and, and victory, the first of two races here at Sepang. And uh, we've got to do it all over again tomorrow, so we don't know what the track conditions will be for that. But we started with a one-hour delay, and at the end of that, here is a graphic showing our victorious pair. Frankie Cheng, who started at Adelie Fong for FAW Audi Sport Asia Racing Team. Victory for them, Eduardo Liberati in the end, just two seconds down in the best of the Lamborghinis, with, uh, shared with uh, Bian Yi, and uh, in behind... Origin Motorsport, formerly rated R&B Racing, their Porsche in there as well. Three makes of cars in the top three positions, three classes, a great chase in the second half of the race when Alessio Picariello and Bastian Boos worked their way up to fourth and fifth positions in their Porsches. And Satoshi Hashino and Tomonobu Fuji, Aston Martin runners coming home in sixth place. Still a possible investigation about their pit stop. And Lauren Heinrich, who's on pole for the second race, sharing with Wei Lu, showing his form. Uh, for the number four Origin Motorsport crew. And a real shuffling of the pack, and uh, some cars went up and then down and then up again. But at the end of the day, a victory in the AM class. Uh, you know, very strong run uh, for the crew. Down in 22nd position overall, but it was Christian Colombo who brought that in. So we've got all these four classes to watch through the course of the season. But I think we've had a really, really strong start in conditions that could have uh, easily, very easily led to lots of cars going off. It was slippery, it was tricky. Some were on wet weather tyres, some were on dry. The ones on dry had to really drive on their tiptoes, and I think they did a fantastically good job. But so Frankie Cheng and Adelie Fong, what a start to 2024. Thank you, Mark. The team got the setup right. They had to perform. They had to deliver. They had a few moments, as uh, we heard from both of those drivers, but uh, they brought it through to the end. And great to see Lamborghinis back in fourth, not only in the field with three of them, but uh, one of them coming in second place. And uh, third place, a Porsche crew, Origin Motorsport, will be very pleased with their start to the 2024 campaign. We counted them out, we counted them in. We had one car damaged before the start of the race, uh, but that hopefully will be in race two. That's GTO Racing Team. But 32 cars in a capacity field here at Sepang was a really, really good start. Now, at the start of the race, the cars had to run around behind the safety cars. We look back at the highlights and then they would be released. And the driver who was at the front of the queue nearly fell off at the previous corner, but Frankie Chen Kong Fu and the driver behind you thought, why are they not cornering? That's because they're on slick tyres and a half the field behind them on groove tyres, on wet weather rubber, and they were the ones that were going to start making the progress, while those who started on slicks were going to start falling down the field. You could see James Yu running wide in the yellow and white and black Audi. That's because he was on slicks. Oh, what a handful to hold on right across the bowels of the uh, Prince. Abu Bakr, Ibrahim, and those that were on wet weather tyres, the tyres really started to go off. They couldn't wait for the pit window uh, to open, and they dived into the pits to uh, make their changes, not just of drivers, to put slick tyres on as well. Eduardo Liberati dived out of the pits. He was waiting for heat to come in his tyres. In the background was Daniel Murad, who pitted, had been given that Mercedes, car number 30, from Kraft Bambi Racing, given that a lap ahead. He had the heat in the tyres, and he thought, I have to make the move to get into the lead of the race before Liberati is happy. There they are, two turn five. Oh, a twitch from the Lamborghini at turn six, and uh, Daniel Murad, thank you very much indeed. He pounced absolute as he should. And then it became very, very tight indeed because the 36 Audi that Frankie Chen Kong Fu started stayed out as long as he could on those slicks, came in, pitted, handed over to Adelie Fong, and Adelie straight on the tail of the number 30 Mercedes. And then as they came across Setia Juan Santoso, Adelie read the traffic better, got into the lead of the race. But the Lamborghini of Eduardo Liberati, that's car number six, right in the heat of the battle. Talking of battling, 
rare, rare mistake here. Marcus Ringhawk brought in for his speed and experience, diving up the inside of a Lamborghini and taking out the BMW. So John O'Lester was going, where did that one come from? And possibly the battle of the race in terms of being close for lap after lap. Two drivers right on the top of their form, fighting over fourth and fifth place eventually, but it was Alessio Piccaro, a Bastion boost, but victory to Adderley Fong, back in the saddle, back with a victor's garland around his neck. And in second place, Right the way to the finish, Eduardo Liberati. Look for the green and white Porsche crossing line. Now that was third place for Origin Motorsports. And applause all around there is Frankie <laughs> Chen Kong Fu. Last victory in this series six years ago. And here it is all over again as his teammate Adderley Fong brings a car to a grandstand and the double fist pump of delight. So now we're waiting for the podium ceremony, which will begin shortly. And I think we'll see not just happy faces, but very relieved faces coming out to accept their, their plaudits and their trophies. Obviously, with four classes of racing, we have potentially 12 crews behind waiting to come out. And I think every single driver in the race here at Spang will have said that was an hour that seemed a whole lot longer if you're on the wrong sort of tires, but uh, really, really good. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the podium ceremony for race one of the Fanatec GT World Challenge Asia, powered by AWS at Sepang International Circuit. We will start the ceremony with the GT3 overall winners. Everybody with big applause, we welcome on third place, car number 87, Huang Bo, Leo Yi Hong Li. On second place, car number six, Bianye Edorado Liberati. And the winners are on first place, car number 36, Frankie Chankofu Adderley Fong. And now we gladly invite Mr. Asfan Shafriman Hanif, CEO of Sepan International Circuit, to award the trophies, please. So as the trophies are handed out, uh, these drivers, they really, really had to work. But those who started on slicks, they will have stories to tell. And those that started on wet weather tires, they had plenty of overtaking to talk about. But a really, really good start to 2024. So the victors, trophies to Adelie Fong and Frankie Chen Kong Fu. Top step of the podium. That's race one here at Sepang. Congratulations. Let's get together for a photo, please. You see the media with the yellow tabards. Please look at the media in front of you. And smile. Well, no trouble at all for those drivers to find a, f a smile. They worked very hard and they got points in the bag already. So those are the top three overall. Then, of course, we'll have the class podiums as well. In fact, they're all running in three different classes. So we'll see all of these drivers hey, all over again. With the photos. Gentlemen, you have it in front of you. Let's take the champagne into your hand. And it's champagne time! Champagne, music, bubbles, and points in the bank. Opening round of 2024. They've got the second race tomorrow here at Sepang. Any of these three crews managed to do it with their success penalties on board for tomorrow, but right now the points are in the bank. Great to hear the support from down below in the pit lane. Certainly throngs of team team members, family members down there looking up at the podium. But it's been a really good start. We had a massive deluge which delayed us by an hour in the countdown to the race, and we uh, Put the race back, got the car started behind the safety car, neat and tidy. A lot of drivers skeetering off towards the edge of the circuit, but holding it together on their slick tyres and those on wet weather tyres coming through. An enthralling race. The pendulum really did swing in one direction and then go back. And now we the have other. the Silver Am class winners. We welcome with applause on third place, car number 66, Ming Heng and Jalen Robotom. On second place, car number 18, Hinoaki Nagai Yuta Kamimura. And the winners on 
first place, car number 87, Bo Yuang, Leo Yi Hong Lee. So in silver and the car that finished third overall also wins this class. An exceptional st start to the race by Bo Yuan as well on, wet, wet, on slick tyres in the wet. So that's it. It's a wrap after race one. We'll be back all over again tomorrow. Do join us for the second race here at Sepang. So this is the silver and podium, the car that finished third overall.